Hello, and welcome to court. Today I'm wearing a shirt that says this is a complicated. It'll be a reoccurring theme throughout this video. I asked this question on Instagram. For historical sites that do not deal in the violence or horror that has affected black people, are people allowed to come in historical garb and peruse the site. And I actually got a lot of responses from all over the world, and they were very varied in their responses, in their approach to the question, but I still had more questions surrounding the question. It's like I'm being paid to say the word question as many times as possible. That's not the case. I really wanted to know if other sites that deal in trauma, but not specifically black trauma or black history, allow people to dress up in historical costume that would be appropriate for the time, and more importantly, historical costume that would be of the oppressor of that site at the time. So I reached out to some historical sites and see what they thought what their policies were. I reached out to a handful of sites because I really wanted insight directly from the source on what policies were around dressing up in historical costume. I asked two questions. Do you allow people to dress up in historical costume at your site? And are people allowed to dress up as insert historical oppressor at your site? I did make the questions specific for each and every site, so as we go through them, you'll be able to hear the differences. I really thought that this was going to be a pretty straightforward method to get a hold of these sites, and I thought it would be pretty simple to do. I didn't really account for my feelings around asking these questions. Maybe it's because I don't wear historical costume every single day of my life, so I don't really have to navigate these questions, but I feel like there's an additional level when you say, okay, and can I dress up as the person who oppressed the people that we are remembering at this site? I've actually been working on this video for a week, but I just, <laughs> every phone call got harder to make and the people were really lovely like that was not the issue people were really lovely and they took my questions seriously but it was it was hard to ask these questions and as I approached the second of my two questions I always felt shame and doubt and every time I spoke to someone they responded to me like how how dare you ask this question. As they should. I'm, I'm not upset for people responding like that. As they should. That was usually the point of the conversation where I had to let them know that I'm a black historical costumer and what the premise of these questions were about. And these questions boil down to one thing. Many plantations, which are sites of human trafficking, of abuse, of murder, Many plantations allow people to come to their site dressed as enslavers. Like it's in their frequently asked questions portion. What you can and can't do. What you can and can't wear. But oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes, <sighs> historical dress is allowed. Now, I am not talking about reenacting or living history or museum work or dossier work or anything like that. I'm specifically talking about dressing up in historical costume for the fun of it. As we go through the handful of sites that I chose to reach out to, you'll see that I did actually look for their frequently asked questions portion to see if I didn't need to call at all. Sometimes these things are hidden, maybe they're in the experience section, or they're in the visit section, or the plan your trip section, so I really tried to go to those keywords to see if it would maybe be there. None of the sites that I reached out to had that on their website. None of them. I had to make the phone calls. 
Now, the specific sites that I chose were not chosen because I knew that they didn't have them on the website. I went in as unaware as you all are going in on this. I wanted to choose sites around America, because that's where I live, that represented a lot of different types of oppression that has happened on American soil. And there's one more thing before I get into it. I did not record any of the calls. I was not speaking to social media managers or PR teams or anything like that. I was calling into their customer service line just like everyone else. And it would be unfair for me to record the call of somebody who is just trying to do their nine to five. That being said, I did take notes on the calls so that I knew how to report in this video. I started out by calling Heart Mountain Organization. Heart Mountain is a World War II Japanese internment site. I will have the links to these historical sites in the description box below and I do encourage you to go through the sites and if you are local and if you have the means to please please visit them. My first question was, do you allow people to dress up in historical costume at your site? The person that I spoke to has never heard of anyone asking if they could wear a historical costume to their site, and they have no knowledge of anyone making requests or simply showing up in historical costume at their particular site. My second question was, are people allowed to wear... <sighs> the uniform of a U.S. World War II soldier at their historical site. I just want to let you know that this person was flabbergasted when I asked this question and they said that that would be absolutely unheard of. Once again, as it should be. They did let me know of an annual pilgrimage that is made by those who were placed in the internment camp and the descendants of those who are no longer here that have been placed in the internment camp where they share the stories and they share the history. And I really, really love that. I really thought that was beautiful, especially because it's such a direct way to connect to history. And there are so many things that happened so long ago that it is impossible to get someone that was directly affected. But this isn't one of those cases. The next site that I attempted to reach out to was a little ambitious. I wasn't specifically looking for one site, but I was looking for one specific site along the Trail of Tears that I could reach out to um, to get some information, some insight into my questions. I tried reaching out to the National Park Service with no luck. I mean, it was a phone tree. It just kept repeating itself and didn't really get me. The National Park Service did have some links to some different organizations and to some different nations that are associated with the Trail of Tears. And while I did go through these websites, the overarching response, no, that's not the word, um, theme, theme of each website was that the people should be respected and that this was obviously a terrible event. I didn't really feel the need to reach out here because it's pretty disrespectful to show up to someone's site wearing the costume of their oppressor. So I left it at that. The next site that I reached out to was Mission San Luis, which is a living history site. This specific historical site features both colonial and indigenous peoples surrounded by the buildings and really the structure that would have gone on during the time. I asked my first question, which I won't really be repeating throughout. I will repeat my second question as a portion of it does change, just to get the point across of what exactly I asked. They do allow people to come in historical costume if it is something that you wear every day. I then asked if people are allowed to come in historical costume or fashion of conquistadors or pioneers of the time. Once again, the person was very obviously flabbergasted and told me that they were absolutely not allowing that to happen on their site. At this specific site, they do not have any representation of an enslaver or a conquistador or any one of that extent 
portrayed in a positive light whatsoever. While guests are allowed to attend in historical costume if it's something that they wear every day, they are not allowed to attend in costume if they are wearing something that is historically accurate and offensive, even if it is their everyday garb. And because this person knew that I was doing this for YouTube, they let me know that there is an extensive process for filming and that they must go through their social media rep, and I mean extensive process for filming on their site, and it must be approved by their social media rep before filming can even take place. This next site, I wasn't able to get a hold of, and I really, really wanted it. If I get an update, I would be happy to provide that in the description box below, but at this time, I could not reach them by phone or by email. The next historical site that I reached out to is the Hawaii Plantation Village. I specifically wanted to reach out to this site because it's a plantation, but the focus here isn't black trauma. And I really wanted to see how they approach the situation. Now remember, none of the historical sites that I reached out to had anything on their websites about coming in historical garb, what type of historical garb you can and can't wear, nothing like that. So I didn't find anything on their website saying that this was something that was allowed. This is in stark contrast to what you would see on a plantation that focuses around black trauma and black horrors that have occurred, which is, it's so surprising to see those differences because, I mean, the disrespect is so blatant. <sighs> I then reached out to Museums Port Isabel which is a site that um, became a historical site during the Mexican-American War. They do allow people to attend in costume, but this person specifically wanted to know if I was asking about reenactment. When I then asked if I would be able to attend this site in U.S. infantry uniform from the Mexican-American War, they said that that would be okay if it was an approved reenactment or an educator that was sought out by the site. I pressed on and let them know that this would be in no way, shape, or form educational at all. The person was completely unaware if that has ever happened. They only knew about the educational side of things, which, and I hate to sound like a broken record, as it should be. Because I was unable to get hold of two of the sites that I really wanted to speak to in this video, I was able to reach out to Corinne from Living Herstory. Um, her stuff is like linked below, so check her out. She's amazing. She's a great educator. And she reached out to the Sequoia Birthplace Museum for me. I forgot to tell her the questions that I was asking, but the response that she got actually gave me a really good insight into what the answer to the second question would be. They have no official policy about coming to their site in historical costume or historical fashions, but that hasn't really been an issue for them because people have not been coming in historical costume. They've been coming as indigenous people in regalia, which is much different. She actually shared some of the stories that were shared with her about people who come in powwow regalia and who just pay homage to those who came before them. And I think that is, that is literally so beautiful. It is perfection. Reading that really felt like there was a lot of connection to that site. And I may be wrong. I may be making an assumption but it doesn't seem like they would want to soil that good feeling, that good vibe that they have going on at that historical site with, you know, letting people come dressed up as oppressors all willy-nilly. Speaking to people at all of these different historical sites really just homed into the absolute disrespect and hurt 
I feel and I see every time I see someone go to a historical site, not as an educator, not as a dossier, not as a reenactor, not as part of staff, not as part of a vetted volunteer system, but just for fun, dressed up in historical costume. And when I say historical site, I specifically mean plantations. I had a feeling at the beginning of this, despite some of the answers I got on Instagram, that this was not commonplace in America. It was not common for people to dress up at sites that were not part of Black Trump. And it really just goes to show how much of a game people think the history of Black folks is in America. It really shows how romanticized slavery is in America. Sites of human trafficking, murders for fun, ripping apart families, the sites of pain and strife and death and abuse are really cool places to dress up in a pretty outfit. And this is something that I have personally seen over and over again. And I always ask myself, why aren't you wearing that outfit somewhere else at another historical site, wearing an equally oppressive outfit at another historical site? And then I remember that slavery is romanticized in America. It's that simple. I wanted to make this video for a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons that I wanted to make this video is because so often when people dress up in historical garb and then go to plantations, people are very quick to run to their defense and say, I mean, how are they to know? Like, how are they supposed to know that's bad? Now, every time you hear someone say that, you can show them this video and let them know that this is not the standard at historical sites. This is how they can know that black trauma is treated much differently. This is how they can know that people take other people's trauma seriously, but are more than willing to trample all over black trauma over and over again for the sake of a pretty picture in a plantation. This isn't complicated. I hope you learned something from this video. I hope that you share this video. Whenever something like this happens, I hope that you share this video within the community. I hope this video changed somebody's perspective on the entire conversation. If you look at the description box below, I've got the website links to every historical site that I mentioned today, along with Corinne's Instagram, which is absolutely amazing and once again, full of educational information. I've also got our coffee page. Do with that what you please. We normally wrap videos on this channel by saying, until next time, um, because, you know, we hope you come back. We want to see you again. We want you to remain as part of our court. And I would love to say that that doesn't have to be said this time, but here I am once again addressing an issue that I've already talked about and expressed my feelings on, again, the same topic in, in the same year. So while it's hopeful to believe that there will not be a next time, I'm pretty sure there will be. So until next time.